I'm a millionaire by 31. Let me tell you how I did it. I got three reasons why I got rich by the time I was 31. Let me give you those. Here's number one. I lived in America. I mean, how lucky can you get? America's easy. That's why everybody wants to come here. People haven't plotted and schemed for 50 years saying if I could just get to Poland, everything would be okay. <laughs> no. No. The boat people are not desperately trying to get to Vietnam. No. They're not squeezing through the fence to try to get into Mexico. No. Neil Diamond says, looks like everybody's heading for... They're all coming to America. Why? Everybody wants to come here by every means possible to get here. Why? Because America's easy. So if you go home with anything, go home with that. Mr. Rohn reminded us that America's easy. He got rich by the time he's 31. America's easy. Bangladesh is hard. <laughs> Just take that home. Here's the average yearly income in Bangladesh. $120. That would be hard. <laughs> Tell me hard versus easy. So America's easy. Cambodia would be hard. The Khmer Rouge killed two million Cambodians to make communism work. That's hard. America is easy. India would be hard. They got their challenges these days. Tough. America's easy. China would be really hard. Underline really and make a study. It's hard. America's easy. And now in about 90 days, you can have that memorized. <laughs> Tell me, that's all you need. I got rich by the time I was 31. I lived in America. America's easy. Now here's number two. I found an opportunity. That's all you got to do in America. Search for an opportunity. Take the first one, right? Try it. If that isn't it, it leads to another. One door closes, another door opens. This is what's exciting about America. It's full of opportunity. A chance to try and then what? Try again, and then what? Try again? Never, never run out of opportunity to try. See if you can't better your life and your health and your future and your bank account and your income. Make your fortune here. I lived in America, number one. Found an opportunity, number three. Number two, here's number three. I found a teacher. What a grand and glorious, unique thing that was for me at that time in my life. I found a teacher willing to teach me. And his teaching came in two parts. Here's what it was. Very simple. Number one, Mr. Rohn, you have evidently messed up <laughs> between ages 19 and 25. Now, I could understand that. But he didn't leave me there. He said, now, here's the answers on how to change it all the next six years so that the next six years won't be like the last six. What an incredible teacher. Taught me how to have a whole brand new six years. First six, what? I messed up. Second six, what? I got it right. Second six years, I became a millionaire. During that second six years, the government was about the same. I'm telling you. Interest rates were about what? The same. The pay scale was about what? The same. Lord knows my negative realities were the same. Circumstances were about the same. The economy was about the same. The unions and their philosophy was about the same. What was going on around me was about the same. Then how come I got rich that second six years? I was not the same. I changed. <laughs> you say, well, Mr. Rohn, if you can do that, can anybody do it? Yes, I invite you on that journey. Anytime you want to. You can stay the same so that the next six years will be like the last six. Take a look at the last six years. And I'm telling you, the next six years of your life is going to be like the last six. Unless, or unless you want to count on this short list that we call not much list. Most everybody's counting on this not much list. What if all of your negative relatives turned positive? What would that do for your future and your fortune? What? Not much. Not much. What if prices came down a little? What will that do for your future? I'm telling you, not much. If the economy gets a little better, what will that do? Not much. Now that the Democrats are in power, what's that going to do for your future? Not, uh, much. not much. We got it. We could get a good debate going here. <laughs> if the Republicans would have stayed in power, what would that have done? Not, not much. much. Hey, we could get a good debate going here. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a not much list. 
If you don't make plans of your own, guess what? You'll probably always fit into someone else's plans. Guess what someone else may have planned for you? <laughs> <laughs> then what's going to make the difference? You're going to have to make the difference. You're going to have to take charge. Now, Mr. Schof, my teacher gave me a promise, and I want to give you that promise now. Here was the promise I got, and I bring it to you. Here's what my teacher said. If you will change, Mr. Rohn, he said, if you will change, everything will change for you. You don't have to change the government. You don't have to change prices. You don't have to change taxes. Forget all that. He said, if you will change, everything will change for you. And the first thing you start changing is what? Your philosophy. You start changing your mind. You start changing how you think. You start picking up new ideas and information. Gather new knowledge. Make better decisions about what's valuable. And I'm telling you, if you'll do that, your whole life will change. Your health will change. Your relationship with your family will change. Your ability to cope with challenges and problems will change. I'm telling you, income, promotions, all of it will change. If you will change, it'll all change. If you won't change, it isn't going to change. You can keep your fingers crossed if you want to and hope they'll straighten it out. You can wish for the wind not to blow quite as severe, but I'm telling you, wishing for the wind to change in your favor, we call naive at best. Don't do this any longer. Wish for a better wind. The key is to wish for the wisdom to set a better sail. Utilize whatever wind that blows to take you wherever you want to go. That is the philosophy I picked up at age 25, and it revolutionized my whole life. And here's what I found. I found it was easy. I got rich by the time I was 31 and it was easy. Now here's my definition of easy. Got to jot this down. My definition of easy, meaning something I could do. I figure if it's something you can do, it's easy. Now here's a parenthesis. Parenthesis. I worked hard at it. I found something I could do, which was easy, but I worked hard at it. I got up early and stayed up late, worked hard that six years. But what I did was easy, meaning it was something I could do. You say, well, Mr. Owen, if it was so easy, how come everybody else around you during that six years, how come they didn't get rich? Here's why. It's easy not to. <laughs> how else would you describe it? That's it. You say, no, no. For all of the rest of them, it was hard for them and it was easy for you. That's not true. You couldn't debate me on that in front of this intelligent audience. But here's the challenge. Let me give it to you in a philosophical phrase. I tend to be a little philosophical. Here it is. The things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. That's the difference between success and failure. So you've got the choice here today of one of two easies. Easy to or what? Easy not to. I can give you in one sentence how I got rich by the time I was 31. Here it is in one sentence. I did not neglect to do the easy things I could do every day for six years. Underline. I did not neglect. That's the key. I found something easy I could do that led to fortune and I did not neglect to do it. Major reason for not having everything you want in America. Major reason for not having more of what you want in America. More health, more money, more power, more influence, more everything. Major reason why you don't get it. Simple answer. Neglect. Neglect. And here's the problem with neglect. It starts as an infection. And if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. And here's what else is the problem. One neglect leads to another. Neglect to do wise things with your money, you'll probably neglect to do wise things with your time. Neglect to do wise things with your time, you'll probably neglect to do wise things with your business. One leads to another, leads to another. Pretty soon, neglect has you by the throat, emptying your purse, emptying your heart, emptying all of your chances for equities and power and all the good things. Neglect. What if you should be walking around the block every day for your good health and you don't? I'm telling you, you're on the wrong track. You should do it, you could do it, you don't do it. That's called formula for disaster. All you've got to do is let that and a few other things accumulate for six years and now you're driving what you don't want to drive, wearing what you don't want to wear, living where you don't want to live, doing what you don't want to do, maybe having become what you really didn't want to become.
I'm telling you, that's it. Just neglect along, drift along, and it's got you by the throat. It'll take all your values, leave you with just a little bit of dust in a summer wind, and it'll soon be gone. I hope I said that well. That's it. It's where I found myself at age 25 until my teacher came along and said, Mr. Owen, up till now you've messed up. Let's see if we can't clean that up, change it all. I did. Change my life. Not just the money, all the rest of the values that came pouring in when I understood that it was me. It was me. So take the easy approach. This stuff's easy to figure out. Getting rich is easy. I teach it to teenagers. How to be rich by 40, 35 if you're extra bright. This stuff is not difficult. I love to teach kids enterprise. I used to wonder why two people could work for the same company, one make twice as much money. Now see, that used to puzzle me. And maybe they were the same age, graduated from the same school, live in the same community, work for the same company, with the same products and the same services. They've got the same traffic, the same problems, and one makes a thousand a month, the other one makes two thousand a month. Now that was my puzzling question. Why would this long list be the same and the money twice as much? I asked, what's the difference between a thousand a month and two thousand a month? And I don't mean a thousand a month, right? I could figure that out. But what, what makes the difference? Why would one person do twice as well, three times as well, speaking economically? Now I know there's more than one way to do well. I understand that. But in this little narrow area called compensation, what's the difference? Well, back then, with my faulty thinking, I'm trying to reason it out. I thought, well, maybe time makes some of the difference, right? Some people do better because they have more time. I used to say, Harold ought to be able to do well. He's got a lot of time. If I had all of Harold's time, I could do well. Now, that's got to be dumb, right? Number one, you can't get somebody else's time. A guy says to me one time, he says, you know, if I had some extra time, I could make some extra money. I said, then forget it. There isn't any extra time. <laughs> hey, when the clock strikes 12 midnight, that about wraps it up, right? I mean, you can look around the gongs there for a little more, but it's over. You say to the guy, what are you doing? He says, I'm looking for extra time. See, they'll come and take you away, right? <laughs> there isn't any more time. Now, if you can't get more time, which you can't, what could you get more of that would make a difference in economic results? And here's the key word. Make it a part of your notes. We're going to consider it tonight. The word is value. And I have a little phrase for your notes. Value makes the difference in results. Value makes the difference. You can't get more time, but you can create more value. Now here's the first lesson of economics. Everybody should learn it from the time they're old enough to understand what a dollar means. How to earn one, how to get one, how to keep one, what to do with it. First lesson of economics. We primarily get paid for value. That's lesson one. Bringing value to the marketplace, that's how you get paid. You don't get paid for the time. I know it takes time to bring value to the marketplace, but you get paid for the value, not the time. Now, since that's true, here's one of the key questions of the evening. Is it possible to become twice as valuable at the marketplace and make twice as much money in the same time? Could you become three times as valuable, make three times as much money? in the same time. Is that possible? The answer is yes, if. And it's always if, right? Life is known as the big if. Harry Truman once said, life is iffy. How true. And here's the big if we're going to consider it tonight. It's possible to do much better at the marketplace if you go to work primarily on yourself. And that's the theme of our seminar tonight. Learning to work primarily on yourself. People have asked me for the last 24 years, how do you develop an above average income? And the answer is, become an above average person. Develop an above average handshake. 
Some people want to be successful. They don't even work on their handshake. As easy as that would be to start on. They let it slide. They don't understand. Develop an above average smile. Develop an above average excitement. Develop an above average interest in other people. Develop an above average intensity to win. See, that'll change everything. Probably one of the most frustrating experiences in life is looking for an above average job with above average pay without becoming an above average person. It's called frustration. And Mr. Shelf gave me probably the greatest clue he gave me when I first met him. He said, Jim, if you want to be wealthy and happy the rest of your life, just learn this lesson well. He said, learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Then Mr. Schof gave me probably one of the most important clues among so many things he taught me, but this was in those early days. Mr. Schof was very kind, but he was also very abrupt. And he had these interesting questions to ask. I'm giving him a little rundown one day on how things hadn't worked out for me. He said, Mr. Owen, I've got the answer for you if you will listen carefully. And listen carefully, I did that day and for the next five years. If somebody's wealthy and happy, you gotta listen. He said, Jim, I've only known you a short time. But he said, it's already my honest opinion that for things to change for you, you got to change. That wasn't quite the answer I was looking for. But that's the answer he gave me, and I pass it along to you on this warm summer evening in Anaheim, California, 1981. For things to change for you, you've got to change. Otherwise, it isn't going to change.